Hi, I'm Gorm. Welcome. This week, we talk about some really good brakes. And I get to get the break-in oil out of the truck. We're past that milestone. Really excited about that. Also, when I talk about really good brakes, I'm talking really, really good brakes. See where we're going with this? Let's get to work. Today's episode is not sponsored by Adam's Wheel and Tire Cleaner. In fact, I've just been using it to see how I like it. I do like it a lot. But this thing, because I don't like body work, we've been using the brakes quite a bit. They work really well, but to keep them clean, you honestly need to just put the applicator on the big jug because they are making a ton of dust and it's a lot to keep after. Adam's to clean the tires so you're not doing body work. We need some more brakes. We doubled, <laughs> technically, the horsepower output by more than two when we took the 396 out and put the 540 in. But we did not double the brakes. They are upgraded. Willwood Master Cylinder and, Master Cylinder and Proportioning Valve. Willwood D52 calipers with bare slot and cross drilled rotors on a set of CPP drop spindles. But there's a lot of room in that rim for activities. Maybe we should do something about that room. So much room, in fact, with a CPP drop spindle specifically set up for a lot more rotor and caliper. Let's get to work. I'll show you what's in the other big box that weighs 80 pounds. All the way from Huntington Beach, California, made by a man named Bill with the last name Wood. Check out this thing. Speed parts, lots of speed parts. For those of you that don't know who Bill Wood is or the owner of Will Wood, yeah, he makes good brakes in Huntington Beach, California. And uh, these are not small. Like, I'm liking this. This is gonna be fun. I can't wait to get this on the track. We're waiting on fluid and it'll be here at some point. But we got spindles, got hubs, got all the hardware to put the hats and spindles together. Two piece rotor and hat. So it doesn't put all the heat into your wheel bearings like the stock one does. You get a two piece hat, aluminum, and then you bolt the rotor to this and that goes to the hub. Engineering. Oh, it gets even better. We have to safety wire the rotors to those. We'll get some help with that. We got some extra lines in case we needed those in that back there. That's all the parking brake stuff so I can actually hook up the parking brake again and have that feature. Pro tip for you guys if you've never done this, if it's a really good company, it usually comes with instructions and also a list of everything in the box. Do an inventory of everything you had in the box before you take anything apart. It could save you a lot of time later. I'm happy to report. Everything is there. And the only thing I'm missing is the brake fluid I ordered. And yeah, then we could get started. I got some other stuff to do today, but yeah, this is now on the list. It's gonna be good. By the way, the CPP drop spindles, they ship raw, not sealed. So you'll have to hit them with some degreaser, clean them up a little bit, then put on some Rust-Oleum and they'll be good to go. They'll look nice for years. It's a new day, paint's drying. Let's get this thing scrubbed down. Let's get all this brake dirt and dust off of it before we do all the work. And then we can start tearing it apart and put new brakes on it. Let's get to work.
I wanna give a huge shout out to Xavier Pressure Wash for coming out, pressure washing my house, pressure washing my driveway, and sealing my driveway. They did such a good job. I could never have made my driveway look as good as they did. And if you really wanna see the difference, go back to episode 14 when I first rolled the truck out into the driveway and take a look at it to now. It's kind of embarrassing. Thank you, Xavier. You and your dad did an amazing job. And if you guys are in the Nashville area, I'll leave a link in the description below of how to get in touch with them. They're amazing and I highly recommend them. Back to washing the truck. I'm gonna scrub this dirty old truck down on this nice clean driveway. And then I'll just rinse it off because it's the driveway sealed now, so all the dirt and water runs right off into the yard. Gotta pet the puppy too. New puppy. Anyway, scrubbing the truck, it's just a simple maintenance item. Scrub it down, wash it off, get the brake dust off of it, get the road dirt and grime off, and it just makes the truck look nice. It's good Saturday activity. By the way, none of these products were actually provided to me. I purchased them with my own money. And I'm gonna call out like this wheel and tire cleaner, like it works really good. You can see the results and judge them for yourself. Now that the truck's clean, it's back in the garage. We can get it up on jack stands and let's get the oil changed down this thing. Once this thing's up on jack stands, give it a good safety shake. If I'm gonna be doing work on the suspension, it's probably gonna require some percussive maintenance. I need this thing to be good and sturdy. So good safety shake after it's up on jack stands to make sure it's safe and ready to go. While I'm waiting on the oil to drain, I'm gonna go ahead and go wash some more vehicles and I got some bushes to trim. The cicadas are singing, all the cars are washed, the bushes are trimmed, the oil's drained out of that. We'll put oil back in that shortly. And yeah, but I'm hungry, so we're gonna go do that. More later. It's a new day. I'm a little sunburned from all my chores outside yesterday, but I got a lot done. So let's get back to getting the oil in this thing. We have seven quarts of the blueprint oil in their filter. We'll get this thing on. I gotta get the old filter off. It should have had plenty of time to drain since all day yesterday. After that, I think I need to mock up one of the new brakes to make sure it clears the rim. It's an 18 inch rim. It should clear, but before I go and ripping things off and disconnecting brakes and have to bleed them and all that stuff, I'm gonna verify that. Got all my stuff laid out. Even cleaned off the workbench, got the instructions ready. Welcome to Under the Truck. Back in episode eight, when I hung these headers, I talked about having room for your oil filter. That will pay dividends right now. I'm gonna be able to get that out of the way. Put the plug back in there, clean everything up down here. I need to find where this is leaking from because it's coming from the back of the valve cover, but that's not right now. So let's get the oil job taken care of and then we can move on to, you know, the brake stuff, what we're really here for. A good preview of what we need to do. Remove two castle nuts, a shock, disconnect this brake line and change out that spindle with the big spindle. And look at all the room for activities in this rim. Yeah, I think those big rotors are gonna look really good. All right, anyway, this is buttoned up. I see the oil that's leaking down off the back of the valve cover. It's not from the gasket. It looks like it's further up on the thing. So there's oil on top of the valve cover going right to the fill cap. Wonder if our crankcase pressure is too high and it's spewing out. <clears throat> Do we need to put a bigger catch can on it? Maybe. Project for another time. I don't know if it'll show up on video, but there's literally oil running all the way to the back from this cap right here. So that means we either have too much positive crankcase ventilation or this isn't sealing well. And yeah, there's oil on it from the bottom side. So we might have to go to a bigger crankcase ventilation setup. 
we'll do some research. Anyway, let's put some oil back in there. Fun thing, this says it's made in the USA, the oil, wherever it was refined. I'd like to know. Blueprint, where you get your Smurf juice from? Because it's blue. I'll finish topping this off and then I gotta go to O'Reilly's anyway for some brake clean and I can go recycle that oil. And we can do that. And then the oil change will be done minus cranking it over and checking the fluid. But we'll probably do that when we put it back on the ground. We're gonna get on to them brakes because we got stuff we wanna do tonight. I don't have time to go to O'Reilly's. All right, made in the USA. Seven quarts are now in it. Let that drain down. Didn't make too much of a mess. These can be recycled. The oil can be recycled. Good things. What's next? Oh yeah, let's get a tire off and let's start mocking up one of the spindles and make sure everything clears. That's what we'll get onto next. No Exxon Valdez, good signs. That needs to go to O'Reilly's. These go in the recycling bin. And let's go mock up a brake so we can see if it fits in that rim. And then we can get into the brakes. Let's go. We're gonna need this as a jig. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the hub, put it in the tire, put the studs in it so the bolt pattern lines up because there's two bolt patterns on here. There's five by five and then there's five by four and a half. We want the five by five. So we'll get that. And just basically line them up, drop the bolts in. We're not gonna torque everything or put any Loctite on them yet. This is just mock-up. Now, if we were putting this together for real, we would torque them to 77 foot-pounds, but since it's just mock-up, put them in, fit it. Correct bolt pattern. This is a really nice machine piece. Will Wood, you did a really good job making this. I know these are cut CNC. Like it says, Will Wood, USA. Part numbers are etched into it three-dimensionally, not just laser cut where it'll wash off or anything like that. So, all right. Hub, halfway done. Let's make sure our lug nuts fit. <laughs> Question, do they? Yay, we don't have to buy new lug nuts. To mock this up, I grab the spindle, the hub, the bearings, all the bolts to put the hat to the rotor, and I just do a basic assembly, hand tightening everything, just so everything's snug. We got everything just mocked up. Everything's dry, there's no Loctite on anything. Nothing is torqued, nothing is super tight. I need to somehow get this into that rim, make sure it spins around, you know, clears this guy right here without tearing it up. I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but I just wanna verify before I undo and have to bleed brakes. Test fit, how are we gonna do this? I'm gonna flip it over, drop those in there, and hopefully nothing scrapes or grinds. This won't be light. Yeah, it's not that bad actually. It's maybe 60, 70 pounds, <laughs> not even. Carrying it by the rotor. Hmm. Line up the holes, maybe. <laughs> Normally you can see them. <laughs> How close? All right, it's all the way in. It's on the tire. See if there's any bad noises. Make 
sure it's all the way down before I spin it around. All I hear is bearings. <laughs> the bearings in there, not this rubbing. All right, all right. Post inspection. No scrapes or bad markings or witness marks or anything like that. So that clears really well. We can get that tire out of the way. Next up, we gotta get that spindle off, unhook the brakes, and we can proceed. We will go through this correctly and assemble it according to the instructions, not just marking it up. Make sure everything's good and done. Gotta get some safety wire. Yeah, so anyway, we'll do that tomorrow. I gotta go cook dinner. See y'all in a bit. I'm a little bit more excited than I was now that I know after mocking this up and knowing that it fits. Let me tell you what I have and what I'm going to so it'll make sense. Stock suspension right now pretty much with a two and a half inch CPP drop spindle in the front. These are bare slotted and drilled rotors. They bolt onto stock and the Willwood D52 calipers. These are aluminum. These help reduce your unsprung weight. They cool off quicker. They're two piston instead of a single piston like the stock ones and they work really well. The only reason I'm going to a 14 inch rotor and a six piston, it's about capacity. This thing is heavy. Yeah, it's a big black Chevy, 4,100 pound truck. If I'm gonna autocross it, I need to be able to slow it down consistently a lot of times. And the 11 inch rotor just doesn't have the capacity for that. That 14 inch rotor gives me lots of braking time and it should cool off pretty fast and consistently give me brakes. Very exciting. Okay. Now it's time for the, are you really, really, really sure about it? Red Loctite. Put the red Loctite on the bolts that hold the hat to the rotor, then go around and torque them to the correct inch pounds. This is a no joke using the correct tool. This calls for inch pounds, not foot pounds. 155 of them to be exact all the way around. The other thing I did that y'all don't often see a lot of is I use a paint marker. Every time I finished one and had it torqued, it gave me one or quick visual reference of what was already done so I didn't lose my place. I was going cross pattern to make sure that it goes on right. And yeah, the two rotors minus the safety wire are assembled. Hubs next. Using the tire and rim as a jig, I'm able to take the hub and torque the studs for the lug nuts to the 77 foot pounds. Great progress today. We've got the hubs torqued. We got all the two-piece rotors torqued. We still need to put safety wire on them. I've got everything laid out driver side versus passenger side because the calipers are specific and so are the rotors. Fun way to remember what way the rotors go. See this swoop right here? This swoop always goes to the front of the truck. So if this is like a wave, you always want the front of the truck going this way. So yeah, that's how I remember that. All my hardware to put the hub together, those all need the grease packed. And then the most dangerous part is gonna be taking the old spindle out and not letting that giant spring in there kill me. I'll show you how to do that next time. I got some feedback and I appreciate it. So when I was doing the safety wire, put out a short showing, hey, this looks really cool because I'm really excited about it. Too loose, too loose. Way too loose, way too loose, way too loose, too loose, too loose, too loose. Not French either. So to fix this, I need to take these back off, re-safety wire them. I'll show you what I've learned since doing it incorrectly. And hopefully it'll help you guys. And once these are done, we can start continuing on with the hubs and a few other things. Full disclosure, I am a little bit sad to be cutting the safety wire, but I'm glad to do it right. So I'll take the time, cut it off, start over, do it as many times as I need to make sure that that safety wire is taut, it matches the specifications that it needs, and it keeps me safe. The whole idea of safety wire is wiring up two fasteners or more in a series to keep this, this one turns righty tighty, lefty loosey. I don't want this bolt to turn left. I don't want this bolt to turn left. So I'm gonna run a piece of wire in between them where if either of them try to turn left, it pulls this wire taut even more and it keeps the fastener from backing out. That's what safety wire does. So 
get a link, go between the two bolts with a little bit of extra, fold it over, come back that way. I'm not cool, so like I can't do like exact measurements. But got my length. I'm gonna start. You can start at the top and come this way, or you can go from the bottom and go up. Either way, I'm gonna start with this one. Put it through the tiny little holes in the top of the bolt head. And if I've done this right, hopefully you can see. There's some APs watching this, probably cringing at the terribleness this is. They can do this in their sleep upside down one-handed. I am not that cool. A lot of race cars, you'll see safety wire on that stuff that is critical that it never backs out. So safety wire is a pretty cool school skill to have. It's not just for AP, even though it's used a lot in the aviation industry. Now I'm gonna to start to work my way towards the other bolt. First, I need to take the one that's coming from the outside, go around to the left, to the other side. And basically, the one that was out here came around the outside, met up with the other one over here. Now, I'm gonna pull this tight with these guys. And since the hole for this one is right over here, I'm gonna put the needle, or the, not the needle, the point of the plier here, and kind of use that as a measuring, like, because this is how long I want the braided piece to be. Pull it tight, these lock, lock the pliers closed. And I'm gonna kind of just give it a tug to straighten it out, make sure I still want that there. Now that I do that, I'm gonna come to this side, hold my thumb here, give it a twist, Give it another twist, not put my fingers near it. And I wanna see how tight this is. This is not as tight as I want it, so I'm gonna do it manually a couple more turns after I line up with this. So it should pull this part of the wire tight. And there it goes. I like that. Come around to where the hole is in the other side of the bolt. A little shorter make sure that's a little tight the whole goal is keeping all this taut while finically not stabbing your finger I'll let that go I need to run one through it and then one around it so this is where the guys that are professionals will just grab it bend it point it through yank it I'm just not that fast or cool this is not. All right, we're through. I use multiple pliers instead of just one pair of pliers because I'm just not that cool. All right. Now, we're around. I'm gonna tug this even tighter here in just a second. The guys that can do this fast, I have mad respect for, because this is tedious. Went around to the left on this one, so we're gonna go around on the bottom. We're gonna go the opposite direction on the top, which is going left again <laughs> on the other fastener. But instead of going around the six o'clock, this one's going around the 12 o'clock if we're looking at the bolt and it was all squared up. Gonna bend it, pull it. Give it a couple twists to the left instead of the right. And now I'm gonna take these and tighten it up. Take all the slack out and then we'll see how it looks. Maybe got, I don't know, not quite three eighths of an inch there worth of extra hanging on just for spin to the left. It pulls it tight. I want to make sure. 
All right, that looks really good. That is really tight there. Like you can give it a little bit of wiggle, but it ain't got much. Trim it. You can trim it also with those. I'm just not good with those pliers. All right, and there's the safety wire. And I'm gonna bend this little tail down and around so I don't stab myself. I'm even gonna use pliers to bend it where it's tucked up under. Ta-da! All right, and there's a good safety wire job versus what I did have that was on there and there and there. And I'll go do the other seven of those and then we'll work on assembling the hubs on the truck. Safety wire time, see you in a little while. I'm gonna speed up time here for you so you don't have to suffer me going through seven more of these safety wirings. Practice makes perfect. I had never safety wired anything in my life before getting these rotors, so this is a new skill. And being able to practice this, I can tell every time I do it, I get a little bit better. I learn a little bit more about positioning the pliers, how to get the braid just how I want it, get the length between those fasteners just how I want it. It just takes practice and it comes with time. So if you're new to this and you're trying this, give yourself some grace. It's gonna take a second, but you will get there. All right, we can pass inspection now. They're all taut, they're much cleaner, and I've learned that these bleed. Looking over what I need to do to get this spindle out of the way, upper lower ball joint, sway bar, shock. I start out by taking the Zerk fitting out of the bottom because I'm gonna put the jack up underneath the lower ball joint to support it when I wanna lower the lower control arm down when I'm separating it. Then I move on to getting the cotter pins out of the upper and lower ball joint, then the one in the tie rod. And then once the bolt's out of the way, I use a tie rod separator. This will really save those rubber <clears throat> gaskets around the ball joint using a tie rod separator. They're a really good tool to have. And as you can tell, I'm still fighting that lower ball joint cotter pin. It's kind of tight in there. For this next bit, I must stress, use extreme caution. That spring is under tension and it will hurt you. I really should be using a spring compressor, but we're in the garage, we can make it work. And I got a plan, so here we go. All right, I did not take this all the way loose, but I'm gonna hit this a couple times with a ball and peen hammer and it should pop it out. Boom, just like that. Top one's done, now I need to do the bottom one. Don't take that off or it will kill you. There's a lot of pressure on that spring and I'm really afraid of it. I'll do the same thing down at the bottom and maybe we'll get lucky. That one's a little bigger. Big boy. Just enough. All right, I think it's time to get this caliper out of the way. All right, let me show you what we're working with. So what we need to do is we're gonna hit this one a little bit. We're gonna leave these on so this, if it comes apart, it doesn't let that big spring out but we need to undo this brake line, get the caliper out of the way, get the shock out of the way. Then we'll tap on this guy a couple of times with a hammer and it should help separate the ball joint from the spindle and we should be in business. Also need to disconnect the sway bar. Just realized that could be a problem, especially when we want it to swing low. So let me get a few more things done. Sway bar, don't forget. All right, this thing's kicking my butt and I just broke a breaker bar. One bolt is holding up this entire process here. The threads are stretched. They're stainless steel bolts. They probably should have been grade eight holding that sway bar. As I'm looking at the rest of them, I'm debating changing them. 
We'll figure out how to get that in there. I did get out the saw saw for some surgery, but I don't have any metal blades. So this might be as far as we get tonight. Dang. I want that off of there. So we can drop this lower A arm down. That's a first. I mean, seriously. I don't know where the other half of it went, but. What am I gonna do now? Since I'm kind of stuck on that sway bar, I watched when I was beating on that, this did pop loose. So it's ready to come apart. So <laughs> I've got the jack in place. I can pick it up. I'm gonna take the bolts off the top and we're gonna lower it down and see how far we can get. Cause we can lift this one out and get this spindle out of the way. But we're gonna get out of the way when we lower this down. <laughs> we'll deal with the sway bar tomorrow. Castle nuts off. It's dangerous now. I'm getting away from it. Lowering the jack. All right, holding the jack there. Man, that sway bar kicked my butt. Do not use your jack from Harbor Freight from 2004 that has a sticky handle. Use a jack that you trust that can go up and down progressively and controlled release so it just doesn't fall on the floor. We can get this done though. We'll make a little bit of progress. That we'll still have to deal with. And now what I'll do, line them up. My ball joint's still good. Put the castle nut back on it. Make it safe again. We'll actually torque these to spec. I just don't want that spring getting away. Oh yeah. Well, We're gonna be redoing alignment. Another one will torque. I don't want to get this jack out of the way. Cool. We'll check the alignment before we put the tires on. But I'm happy with that. I gotta go get a saw saw blade for a little bit of surgery there. But there, with a, before I put oil all over that. All right, 
progress. Torque, 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 new cotter pins, saw saw blade. All right, I gotta go cook dinner. We'll play more tomorrow. I go about tightening the upper and lower ball joints and the castle nuts. This is one of those you tighten them to spec and if the cotter pin doesn't totally align, go ahead and tighten it just a tiny bit more. Always tighten, never loosen when it comes to that. And then I'll reinstall the outer tie rod, tighten that one to spec, put in the cotter pin. Then I'm gonna go about packing the bearings for the hub. Just using my hand, pack it in, make it nice and greasy. Put the seal in the back of the hub. Do the same thing for the other hub while I got it on the bench. Make a mess once, you know what I mean? Try to limit the mess. With all those packed, I'm gonna move over to the truck, install the hub, put on the rotor and hat for the first time. It looks awesome. Then I'm gonna go about tightening the castle nut that holds the entire assembly together. And then I'm gonna go back and forth with the amount of tension that holds the entire assembly on. And then once I'm happy with the tension, I'll tighten it up. Then I can put on the caliper for the first time. I'm gonna grab the shims and I'm gonna center the caliper up, down, and left and right to make sure it fits in proper alignment with the rotor. First time seeing it in on the driver's side. Things are going real well. Everything fits up, bolts up nice. We have a lot of all the we have this spaced out correctly. It fits in well with the pads. The only area that I don't like is right here where the control arm is. We have to make some clearance through there. I'm gonna do some research and figure out how to do that safely. Cause well, I don't wanna take too much away and have a flimsy A arm out there on the end. Research. But for now, bask in the goodness. One side, progress. That lower control arm is touching the rotor, right? Let's make it where we can see it. See this lower control arm right here? See where the rotor comes right up to it? Contact, that's bad. We can't have that. That is a no-go. If you look down underneath of it, where the ball joint is, let me shine some light in here, is the ball joint. This is the A-arm. It's a stamped piece of steel, but see how it is shaped? That's important. There's no hammering or grinding on this. This supports that ball joint. The reason that's important is that ball joint is one of the things that keeps that 850 pound per inch coil spring where it's supposed to be. If this ball joint lets go, that goes down, that comes out, and that breaks things or kills me. I don't like that idea. The only fix that I can think of is we do something about the upper and lower control arms and the sway bar. This just got really expensive really fast. We're not riding off into the sunset testing these giant six piston brakes this week, but that's okay. We'll find the components that make them fit. We'll make it where all the suspension works. We'll make it where all the steering works with them. And I'll show you the pieces and parts that it takes to get that along the way. Next week, it should be a lot of fun. Thank you guys for watching so much. I appreciate the support. We're over 300 subscribers. It's amazing. We're gonna keep growing. We're gonna keep working on the truck. We're also gonna work on some other projects here soon. So if you wanna see that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button to tell me I'm doing all right. It doesn't cost you a thing and it really does help out the channel and it helps it grow. And if you see something that is a safety concern or a problem or something you like, go ahead and put it in the comments. It helps the channel out. It tells the algorithm, hey, this dude's an idiot. He needs to look at his safety. Much appreciated either way. Thank y'all.